Hi, this is Ben Hart with another edition of Win Life. By the way, anyone who follows the advice in my new book, Win Life, is almost sure to be in the top 1% without much trouble. And today we're going to talk about how to know if you have a winning product or idea. Now, quick summary of my background before we get started. I've been in the advertising business for more than 30 years, built an ad agency, wrote speeches for America's leading political figures in the 1980s, including Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. My advertising, marketing campaigns, and websites have generated more than $1 billion for my clients over the years. At age 65, I'm also the world's oldest actively competing breakdancer. Now at age 65, I'm no longer really focused on making money. I'm mostly focused now on writing the books that I've wanted to write for years, but just didn't have time to write. And I'm focused on teaching young people who are between the ages of 15 and 30 what I wish I had known when I was that age just getting launched in life. This channel is focused on skills, habits, and routines that you need to succeed in business and in life. We also talk about investing, health, fitness, and critical thinking skills. And today we're going to talk about how to know if you have a winning product or idea. Now most of us have all kinds of ideas for products and services. And we usually think our ideas are awesome. But usually our ideas really aren't much good at all. And most of them have been thought of and tried before. A friend of mine thought he had this great idea for exercise equipment. He had a prototype made. He showed it to his friends and family. They all told him that this was a great idea. One thing you never want to do is test your idea on family and friends. They're all going to tell you that your idea is amazing and that your product is a surefire winner. And they might even believe it. But mostly they want to be nice. They want to be encouraging. And even if they think your idea is not that great, they don't want to be a bringer of bad news. So he then spent about $150,000 to have 3,000 units manufactured, this piece of exercise equipment. And he wasn't able to sell them. Well, some of his family and friends bought the contraption, and it actually was a pretty decent piece of exercise equipment. The problem was there were already similar contraptions on the market being sold by the big fitness equipment makers. So he was stuck with a storage area full of 3,000 pieces of this equipment he could not sell. Had I known he was going to order up 3,000 pieces of this equipment for $150,000, I would have told him, don't do it. Do not do it. The most important word in marketing and in business is test. T-E-S-T. Test. Test your idea. Test your product. When McDonald's launches a new product, a new food item, or a meal, they test it first in a small geographic area. So once you think you have a good product and you've created the prototype, what you want to do is create a few units of your product and see if you can sell it to strangers. You want to test it. Your per unit cost for making these few units will be much higher. So initially, you will lose money on each unit you sell. You judge the success or failure of your test based on how much it will cost to make your product in volume, in large quantities. So in this test phase, you are paying for information. You never want to assume that your product will sell before you test it. Test it in small quantities. So instead of paying $150,000 for inventory that you can't sell, you can maybe spend $20,000 to see if there's a market for your product or idea by having fewer copies of it made. If the product doesn't sell, then you've saved yourself $130,000. Excess inventory is the death of many businesses. Inventory is like a pile of cash sitting on the floor that you will have to burn if you can't sell it. Now one way to know if your idea or product will be successful is if people show interest in the early bad version of it. For example, I remember a business meeting I was in in the late 1980s. Someone brought in a mobile phone to the meeting. This phone was made by Motorola and was about the size of a shoebox. The battery only lasted about 20 minutes. The battery then had to be recharged for a day or so if you wanted to use the phone again. But everyone was fascinated by this mobile phone. And there was almost nowhere it would work because there were very few cell towers in those days. In fact, maybe it relied on satellite, I'm not sure. 
They wanted to hear what a phone call on this thing would sound like. This is how you know you have a potential blockbuster product. When people who see the bad early version of it take some physical action to find out what it is. They get up out of their seats. They walk over and take a look at it. They pick it up and they fiddle with it. And they try to use it. I had this response when I first saw the internet in action. And so did everyone else. The instant I saw the internet in action, I knew I wanted to be connected to this thing. I saw the internet for the first time in 1989. A friend of mine was hooked up to it and showed me something called Prodigy. He was able to check the weather and the news and send and receive something called email. The trouble was, almost no one knew what email was in 1989. A lot of people just getting on to the internet because they feel that they have to get onto the playing field, so to speak. Well, it's very hip to be on the internet right now. Right. <laughs> there it is, violence at NBC, GE, com. I mean... Well, well Allison should know. What, what do you is say internet about anyway? How does one, what do you write to it, like mail? No, a lot of people use it and communicate. I guess they can communicate with NBC writers and producers. Allison, can you explain what internet is? But by 1990, everyone would know what email is. At that time, you had to connect to the internet with a landline phone jack. And it was very slow. But everyone who saw it knew instantly that they wanted to be on it. It was obvious that the internet was going to be a major development because everybody wanted to be on the bad early version of it. The same with the first automobiles. Once people saw this horseless buggy chugging along at 10 miles an hour in the late 1800s, everybody wanted one. Henry Ford figured this out and started mass producing the Model T in 1908. And he famously said, you can have any color you want so long as it's black. Henry Ford was the father of mass production. Apple's first version of the iPhone really wasn't much good, but it was much better than everything else on the market at that time. Steve Jobs' insight was that the phone could be a media device, not just a phone. Since you have this phone, this device that you're carrying around, and it's already connected to the internet, people could send and receive email on this thing. Why not just put a screen on it so people can watch videos? Plus, the iPod was already a big hit product for Apple. So just combine that with the iPhone plus video. Once everyone saw the iPhone, everyone wanted one. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. You know you have a winning product or idea if people take some physical action in response to seeing the bad early version of it. They get up out of their seat. They want to hold it. They fiddle with it. This, by the way, is another reason why you do not want to make the perfect the enemy of the good. Do not make the perfect the enemy of the good. If you think you have a great product idea, create a primitive version of it. Don't make it perfect. See if people respond. If people respond by taking some action to see it and play with it, you know you have something. Then if people actually pull out their wallets and credit cards to buy it, you know you have a winner. You can then improve it in response to market feedback. Don't invest a lot of time and money trying to perfect your new product until you've tried to sell the bad early version of it. Test is the most important word in marketing and building a business. Well, that's it for now. If you like this content and want to see more, please hit the like, subscribe, and notifications button. Get my free Win Life newsletter by heading over to winlifeinstitute.com. It's free, comes out once a week. And check out my book, Win Life, Success Skills Schools Don't Teach. You can find it on Amazon in all the formats, print, Kindle ebook, and audiobook. You'll certainly be in the top 1% if you follow the advice in this book. I wish I had had this information when I was in my 20s. And leave any comments and questions you have below. I do read the comments and I will answer your questions. And check out the links to the success resources that I've included below. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you back here for the next edition of Win Life.